Baton Rouge the murder captain, man. Everybody needs to straighten up right now. They see what happened right here with G Money, bro. It's so real. If person don't realize it, man, everybody down here in this world need to love each other, bro. You gotta bury your child. This is so wrong when people kill people kids. Kenya Taylor is still grieving. More than a month after her son, 18-year-old Keandre Ricks, was shot and killed just steps away from his Nebraska Street home. This music video shows Ashton Wells performing under his stage name, Boulevard Quick. Baton Rouge police say the local rapper was shot and killed at his home at Lakeside Villa Apartments on Wellwood Drive after midnight. Last weekend, the 19-year-old was in South Florida performing at the Rolling Loud Hip Hop Festival. Before his performance, police say the rapper and his crew were shot at outside the Trump Beach resort. An innocent man died in that shooting. The rapper's girlfriend was also shot but is now out of the hospital. Warning, this video was not made with intent to criminalize anyone. I am not accusing anyone of doing anything illegal. Everything we hear about in this video is all public information that I've gathered through research on the internet. If you want to watch this video completely uncensored and uncut, you can watch this version on my Patreon for just $2, patreon.com slash JohnAnthonyHD. In the late 90s to 2000s, the state of Louisiana was buzzing in the world of hip-hop, being led by none other than Lil Wayne. After Wayne's commercial success, he inspired a whole state to begin rapping. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't any other rappers from Louisiana before Lil Wayne, but there certainly wasn't anyone who had reached the heights of Lil Wayne. During this time, a Baton Rouge native by the name of Boosie Badass, aka Lil Boosie, started pursuing his rap career. After Boosie's cousin named Young D introduced Boosie to another Baton Rouge rapper named C. Loke in the late 90s, Boosie would be mentored by both Young D and C. Loke. On August 19th, 2000, at the age of just 17, Boosie dropped his debut album, Youngest of the Camp, which was released under Camp Life Entertainment. This album actually peaked at number 96 on the Billboard's US and R&B chart. From there, Boosie would follow up with his second album, For My Thugs, on January 1st, 2002. It would be during this time that Boosie's close friend named Ivy Charod Smith otherwise known as Lil Ivy, would become interested in creating a record label. And on May 15th, 2002, Lil Ivy would incorporate a label called TBG, which was short for Top Boy Gorilla. Unfortunately, just three years after creating TBG, on Sunday morning, April 3rd, 2005, Lil Ivy and two of his other homies were hanging out in the car when, according to police, someone pulled up next to the car and opened fire, killing Lil Ivy and his two homies in the process. The shooting was believed to be the result of an altercation that took place at a club in Baton Rouge called Club Shenanigans earlier that evening. After the unforeseen death of Lil Ivy, TBG would struggle to find talent to establish them as a mainstream label. And would it be until 2015, 10 years after the death of Lil Ivy, that TBG would actually begin to gain some buzz with their flagship artists G Money and Fredo Bang. Around this time, a kid in Baton Rouge named Kentrell Golden, who went under the rap name Young Boy due to his young age of just 16, would align himself with TBG. Young Boy started forming a bond with TBG, and early photos show Young Boy and his brother OG3 sporting TBG sweatshirts. On April 10th, 2015, NBA Young Boy dropped his debut mixtape called Life Before Fame, and as you can see on the bottom left, this mixtape was released under the TBG banner. The next day, on April 11th, 2015, G Money and Fredo Bang would drop their track iPhone 6 alongside Boulevard Mel and YMM Captain, to which Youngboy actually appeared in the music video, so it seemed as if YB and the rest of TBG were all on good terms. At the time, TBG was involved in a very dangerous street war with another Baton Rouge rap group called BBG, which was short for Bottom Boy Gorilla. Youngboy's cousin, Boozilla, who grew up mentoring Youngboy at an early age, was actually a part of BBG. There's multiple rumors as to how this beef between TBG and BBG started. The first is that Boozilla robbed G Money and took his pack, which is slang words for drugs. Because at the time, G Money was allegedly still in the streets slanging them drugs. The second rumor is that Youngboy and Boozilla fell out over a female named Brianna. Another rumor is that Youngboy was allegedly the one who actually took G Money's pack but blamed it on his cousin Boozilla. Boozilla actually put out a tweet suggesting that this is true 
in December 2015 when he said that his family turned his back on him and it's speculated that Boozilla actually wanted to kill Youngboy for blaming the robbery on him. An early video of Boozilla and fellow BBG affiliate Baby Joe showed them dissing Youngboy and saying f NBA while flashing guns. <laughs> After all this went down between Youngboy and Boozilla, tension started rising between Youngboy and TBG. Youngboy felt like he wasn't getting any spotlight from the label because their focus was on Fredo Bang and G Money, so eventually, Youngboy and his brother 3 would leave TBG. After that, Youngboy and 3 would come together sitting on the porch one day, where Youngboy and 3 vowed that they weren't trying to go broke anymore, so they agreed to form the group called NBA, which is short for Never Broke Again. The group consisted of Youngboy himself, who was of course the leader of NBA, OG3, who was NBA's co-founder, Montana, who was a father figure to Youngboy, Big Dump, who was Youngboy's manager, NBA Ben 10, Herm the Black Sheep, Michi Baby, Who Gang D, NBA Lil Pap, NBA Choppa Boy, NBA Big B, NBA KD, and eventually BBG Baby Joe would actually become a member of NBA. On December 1st, 2015, Youngboy would drop his second mixtape and his first project officially under the NBA banner called Mind of a Menace. On this mixtape is where the TBG and NBA beef would officially take to wax. On the intro, Youngboy disses TBG when he said that after dropping Light Before Fame, TBG actually became envious of him when they tried not to push his rap career further. On the outro, Youngboy says that he's his own boss and not under anyone's administration, which could be perceived as a shot towards TBG. I got a name on life for famous when they started the TBG wouldn't respond to the sneak diss, and in early 2016, Youngboy and his cousin Buzilla actually ended up squashing the beef and making amends. Youngboy continued his momentum on April 1st, 2016, when he dropped his mixtape, Mind of a Menace 2. On this mixtape, Youngboy took more shots at TBG. On the intro track, he said that TBG doesn't live up to anything that they talk about, and that he's ready to go to war with TBG. I started with some niggas about a year ago, but they ain't live up to that shit. On the track, A Lot of Miles, NBA Youngboy threw more subliminal shots at TBG, saying that he didn't switch up on them, he just got smarter. Them boys say I switch, I just got smarter, I ain't changed, nigga. A couple months later, on June 27th, 2016, NBA Youngboy dropped his mixtape Before I Go, and on the track, Change, Youngboy sends direct shots at TBG when he actually name-dropped the group. Around this time, it was rumored that G-Money was actually hooking up with Youngboy's sister. So on this track, Youngboy directly references it. He won't speak on my sister. Youngboy, not TBG, NBA, it's a real living. A couple of weeks later, on July 16th, 2016, Boozilla dropped a track called Forgive Me. And on this track, Boozilla dissed FL member Dusa, who was a member of the group FL, which stands for Forever Loyalty, which is closely affiliated with TBG, when he said that Dusa is scared walking through the south side of Baton Rouge. Dusa and Boozilla had a heated beef, in which Boozilla allegedly shot up a couple of FL gang member houses. After this all happened, Dusa allegedly put a hit out on Boozilla for dissing him on Forgive Me, and for allegedly shooting up FL members' houses. A couple months later, on November 2nd, 2016, is where this beef would become a life or death war. Boozilla was riding his bike around 12 a.m. when he would be shot dead and left in the middle of the street. A couple hours later, around 9.49 a.m., Youngboy and his homies hopped in a car and shot up a house of the people they believed did the murder on Boozilla, located on Nebraska Street, to which 37 shots were let off when Youngboy and his crew left the house riddled in bullets, with police reports saying that Youngboy was firing shots from the car with an assault rifle. One of Youngboy's homies, NBA Joe, would actually wind up getting shot in the neck during this retaliation attempt. After they shot up the house, they fled the scene, to which the vehicle would end up crashing right by the LSU lakes due to a flat tire, where the shooters would get out and flee, as NBA Joe stood in the car wounded until he was discovered by law enforcement. This shooting was so brutal that three local schools in Baton Rouge were actually placed on lockdown, 
and feared that the children attending the schools would be in danger. Eventually, in April 2017, two suspects would be arrested for the murder of Buzilla, one of them being then 27-year-old Monty Carey, and the other shooter allegedly being then 17-year-old Treshawn Coates. The next day after the shooting took place on November 4th, 2016, NBA Youngboy dropped his mixtape Mind of a Menace 3, and on the opening track What You Saying, Youngboy once again directly dissed TBG when he said that he doesn't owe them a penny. Eventually, authorities issued a warrant for Youngboy's arrest after the drive-by shooting on November 3rd. A couple of weeks later, on November 28th, Youngboy was arrested in Houston, Texas before a show where he was set to perform. Youngboy would be charged with suspicion of attempted first-degree murder for that drive-by shooting. Youngboy would be transported and booked into the East Baton Rouge prison on Wednesday, December 7th, where his bond was set at $200,000. Police have made a second arrest now in a string of shootings that erupted in Old South Baton Rouge last month. 17-year-old rapper Kentrell Galden, better known by his stage name NBA Youngboy, is behind bars tonight after being taken into custody by federal authorities before a concert in Austin, Texas. Investigators believe the violence was in response to the shooting death of an 18-year-old. Scotty Hunter spoke with the victim's mother, and here's her message tonight. You gotta bury your child. This is so wrong when people kill people kids. Kenya Taylor is still grieving more than a month after her son, 18 year old Keandre Ricks, was shot and killed just steps away from his Nebraska Street home. It's like I'm dreaming and I haven't woke up yet. Like I had a bad, bad dream. I'm just waiting on the Lord to wake me up. Taylor walked us over to where her son's body was found, a place she's visited often, trying to make sense of the senseless killing. Then this way he must have fell it right here. Cause they had blood all right here, all up there. I'm stuck in this world on my own. The 18 year old was an aspiring rapper, spending most of his time working on his lyrics. It's his rising popularity that Taylor believes may have attracted unwanted attention. Like he was just born just to do that. Like he just he was so excited, he really loved to rap. And they took his chance, they, they cheated him out of life. They took his chance of doing it. I still don't understand why nobody done this to him. They shot my baby down like a dog in the street. The shooting led to a rash of gunfire in Old South Baton Rouge in the days that followed. Last month, police arrested 20-year-old Derek Geis in connection to a separate shooting on Nebraska. And tonight, police say they've arrested 17-year-old Kentrell Golden, a rapper known by his stage name, NBA Youngboy, in connection to a drive-by shooting on Kentucky Street. Detectives believe those shootings may have been in retaliation to Rick's death and say more arrests are possible as they continue to investigate. I just want just to be served. Tonight, Taylor is praying that her son's killers are are caught and hopes that other parents will learn from this tragedy and cherish every moment they have with their children. You just tell your child you love them every day and give them a hug because you never know what the outcome. You don't know if they go walk out their door and come back home or not. During his prison tenure on January 18th, 2017, Youngboy's TBG op G Money linked up with Slim El Chapo and Pablo El Chapo to drop the Youngboy disc called WNBA Smoke, referring to Youngboy's group as WNBA, which is the Women's National Basketball Association. On this track, G Money and the rest refer to YB as WNBA Youngboy, and G Money threatens Youngboy, saying that he's going to blitz YB and that he's going to end up missing if he disses him. Youngboy sat in jail awaiting his trial date, and in February 2017, Youngboy would be charged with two counts of attempted first-degree murder, which saw Youngboy copping a plea deal and one of those attempted murder charges being dropped, and the other was reduced to aggravated assault with a firearm. On April 13th, 2017, Youngboy's rival at the time, Scotty Kane, dropped the track called Ain't Gon' Ride, to which the song features G Money, and on his verse, G Money sent shots at Youngboy once again. About a month and a half later, on May 22nd, 2017, Youngboy would be officially released from prison, where he would be sentenced to a suspended 10-year prison term, three years of active supervised probation, and would be fined $5,000 in order to perform 250 hours of community service. <laughs>
Let's say, man. Let's say, pull up. Let's say, you know what the fuck it is, nigga. On Montana. Hold up, man. What's up, baby? I'm cool, man. 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 I'm cool, man saying that he's heard G-Money's diss songs and that he's allegedly gonna get G-Money killed. During his prison tenure, a producer for TBG named Austin on the track, who made beats for YB's ops like G-Money and his then-rival Scotty Kane, which he actually produced the beat for the diss track that Scotty Kane made on Youngboy. On August 10th, 2017, Austin on the track was chilling in his car with his cousin around 7 p.m. when a car pulled up next to the vehicle and fired several shots, leaving Austin on the track Real name, Austin Norwood, dead at 22 years old, and his homie was left injured. The police believe that the murder was set up due to Austin and his cousin going online to advertise a cell phone for sale. A couple days after this, on August 14th, 2017, G Money did an interview with Say Cheese where he seemingly dissed Youngboy when he bragged about hooking up with his sister and says that Youngboy got a big head after he blew up. When we look up the name on the blog and on YouTube, it's a whole bunch of different channels talking about, you know, um, NBA young boy going at, you know, uh, G Money and, you know, the, you know, the Instagram shit that happened last week. Yeah. I mean, for the people that's listening, do you want to talk about that? I'm not here to instigate. This is all over, you know, the YouTube. Oh, man, I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. I, I, I mean, was... but, you know, I don't want people thinking that. I don't want people to think that I'm instigating. So if you're open to talk about it, we can talk about it. Yeah, man, it's all good. We can rant about that. I ain't tripping. So, I mean, do you are, are you and Young Boy the same age? Shit, no. That little nigga younger than me. Okay. So, I mean, do y'all have history? Was y'all ever cool, you know, prior, years prior? Yeah, that little nigga like my little partner. He used to be like my little brother. He stayed with me and everything. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, y'all was cool. Did y'all ever do any music together? Oh, what you say? Have y'all ever done any music together? Nah, but we was on the same label at one point in time. The, the label I'm on now, he was once under here. Okay, I mean, so, I mean, where did, where did it go south? Uh, it really ain't just like when, you know, leave off on the band. No, like everything was still all good until he started, you know what I'm saying, like doing his own thing, getting him a little buzz, getting a little money, and he just got the big head and just started feeling like in it, like the feelings he been feeling probably deep down the side that he was scared to put out. He let that out once he got a got a name and got, you know, got from down here. He started letting this shit out how he probably been feeling. Right, because I mean on the blogs and you know on the, you know on the uh you know the blogs and the Instagrams, uh, you know, when we posted and everybody, a lot of people were trying to make you seem like the hater. Because yeah. you know how it is, man. The person that's popping that's more popping right. is gonna always you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, see, we were just talking about that though. Like, like hey, everybody gonna do it like that. Like, if if this if he didn't blue, and you ain't you know what I'm saying you ain't there yet. If, if y'all if, you know if y'all got something going on, they gonna look at it like, oh well, he didn't blew up, so he just hating on him this and that. But they don't know the history. They don't know what what this man doing. They don't know he sneak this and on this song. He saying this and saying that. He saying boo boo shit about a nigga supposed to just not say nothing. You hear me? Like y'all don't pay attention to all that shit. But fuck what they say on it. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it ain't, so it, it ain't just nothing real major. Like, it ain't no real, I don't really have differences like that. It's just, Not like, really. He mad, he mad about his sister, too, though. About his sister? Yeah, I had fucked her a long time ago. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he I mean, mad about I mean, that. He, was, he wasn't really tripping on it back then, though, you know what I'm saying? He be calling me big brother and shit, you hear me? I guess he just let that famous shit get to his head. Now he feel like he just, this new nigga. Whoever he's supposed to be, whoever he called himself. Right, I mean, I mean, both of y'all are buzzing, man. I mean, I know a lot of people want y'all to do music together. Will, will it ever happen? Right. Wait, wait what you said? I'm, will, will, will y'all ever, will it ever happen to where, though? Because I know a lot of your fans want y'all to do music together. Yeah. I mean, will that, will that ever happen? I don't really too much see it happening like that. Like, I don't be with all that. I don't really be with all that. Like, I'm gonna just do my thing and keep letting him do his thing. You know what I'm saying? After this, a back and forth would occur on Instagram between G Money and NBA Youngboy. I'm like, I'm already rich and I ain't even rich yet. And I'm living with the white folks. 
Couple days after this back and forth on August 27th, 2017, G Money dropped a diss track on Youngboy called Industry. On this track, G Money starts off by calling out Youngboy for sneak dissing him on his songs. He then says that Youngboy had him looking for his cousin Boozilla and that Boozilla allegedly wanted to kill YB. And then it gets real disrespectful when he mentions hooking up with his sister once again. G Money then says he knows the real YB and that he's Sharonda's son so he can't kill him. About a week later, on September 5th, 2017, G Money dropped a track called Bodak Yellow G Mix, where he once again would diss Youngboy. He started off by saying that Youngboy is mad about a female, referring to his sister, and says that YB switched on TBG. G Money wouldn't stop there. He would go live on Instagram where he would diss YB, saying that he's scared of him and continues his rant on Youngboy and his crew. I ain't tripping, man. I, I, I ran on Triple Wall, man. You hear me? I respect it out there. You know what I'm saying? I pulled up, I pulled up out there with a third eight when a nigga had a whole chopper trying to save a nigga. But I ain't gonna speak on it. You hear me? Way throwback shit. You hear me? 13, you know. 14, 15, 16. You know, throwback shit. That's him, man. Who got a problem with Young around here? Now, Young on the other side. Ain't that shit crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah that got her lit. Got her on here with that yeah, you know I mean? But it's all good, though. Like I say, I ain't tripping on no nigga, dissing on no nigga, no none of that, you hear know I me? Mean? It's all good. But just remember, nigga was fucking with you, nigga was deaf and I ain't no nigga ever do no fake ass hating ass shit like other niggas did, you hear know I me? Mean? You hear me? Yeah, other niggas hated, you know, did fake shit, huh, Chapo? Yeah, they did. You know what I'm saying? It's all good though, you hear me? I ain't doing no tripping. Yeah, we, we up now too. We ain't next up. We up now. Then I'm getting, I'm coming in the industry strong. I'm not f with none of you fake ass, bitch ass rap who be all on the nigga. Hey, no f with Kodak though. Shout out to Kodak. He ain't with the industry shit. I f with niggas like that, real street. Who just blew up and got that bag now? You know what I'm saying? Been having that bag, you know what I'm saying? I, we we come to the labor to a bag, you hear me? You know, please and come with that thing. What's happening? What you want to do? What you want to do? With something like this to his ear? What you want to do? You know what I'm saying? How y'all want to run this? Bitch, you know? Yeah, y'all it's y'all calling. You hear me? How you know? Oh, how he a boss and he got a CEO and all that? Shit there, you hear me? You know? Yeah, them niggas bullshit. They got to run them. Don't nobody run nobody over here. Everybody bosses. Yeah, nothing but bosses over here. You just be looking up to because they got money and shit, man. Y'all think that shit real? That shit don't make no real, man. Because a nigga got money, man. These be writing and everything with paper, nigga. Like the most, the most, because all shit got paper, man. They got a million racks with money and y'all respect them. Nigga. I can't respect that shit, son. I just can't feel that shit, man. You hear me? Oh, he got money. Fuck, he told on everybody, but shit, that nigga got money, Cleese. We gonna go on <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, fuck. He got a little money, man. He yeah, they got them thick in the booty. One month you got on a TBG shirt. Then this one month, month you got on a YFN shirt. Then the next one month, month you got on a NBA, NBA shirt. shirt. One month one you got month on a you run from your partner. YMM shirt. Yeah. Grown yeah. ass, cut ass, fake ass. Booty. Just come from you're gonna embarrass your turn. Yeah, man. The 
Jack and you ain't do nothing about it. Made you can't boy strip. Made you strip and you ain't do nothing about it. So how you think you can? So how you think you can tell me something? How you think you can go against me? How you think you can do that? You won't survive. Come on. After this, it was speculated that Young Boy's manager, Big Dump, put a hit out for G Money to have him killed. G Money went on yet another Instagram rant on NBA Young Boy, but this rant cost him his life. If you look in the background where G Money was, you could see a brick building with a black door. Now, this was a recording studio located on Dallas Drive in Baton Rouge that TBG would frequently record at. On September 9th, 2017, around 11 p.m., G Money was seen in the studio recording what seemed to be another NBA Youngboy diss song. A couple hours later, G Money finished his recording session, so he left the recording studio. Obviously, G Money was at that same recording studio that he was always posted up at. While G Money was outside, he was caught off guard by a shooter. And at 1.30 a.m., G Money, real name Garrett Burton, was unfortunately found shot and killed outside of the recording studio. During the filming of the murder scene, a bloody pillow was seen on the ground and would go viral. A rumor sparked that after G Money's killer shot him, he threw a pillow at him and told him to go to sleep. Baton Rouge police are looking into a deadly shooting that claimed the life of a local rapper. Police say someone shot and killed 22-year-old Garrett Burton on Dallas Street around 1.20 last night. Under the name G Money, right now, police have not named any suspects or motive. If you can help police or have any tips, you can report them anonymously to Crime Stoppers. Your tip could lead to a cash reward. Baton Rouge, the murder captain, man. Everybody needs to straighten up right now. They see what happened right here with G Money, bro. It's so real. If person don't realize it, man, everybody down here in this world need to love each other, bro. Eventually, in January 2023, NBA Lil Pap, real name DeAndre Fields, was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison for the alleged murder of G Money. A lot of you are reacting tonight to the arrest of this man, DeAndre Fields. Batner's police say they arrested him years after the shooting death of a local rapper, Garrett Burton. Back in 2017, Burton went by the name of G Money. He was found shot to death in the parking lot on Dallas Drive there. Police arrested DeAndre Fields for second-degree murder. Fredo Bang would actually say on a couple of different occasions that NBA Lil Pap was not the man who killed G Money. Let be wrong. That man ain't do that. Brown. Less than a month later, NBA Youngboy dropped his mixtape, Ain't Too Long. And on this mixtape, he references G Money and the ongoing war with TBG. On the track, Poor One, Youngboy reminisces on his friendship with G Money, saying that he actually used to look at him as a big brother, but said he betrayed him after G Money slept with his sister and bragged about it online. Youngboy then references when G-Money blamed him for getting his pack stolen. On the track, War With Us, Youngboy starts off by referencing how G-Money caught him slipping, and nobody knows who did it. <laughs> On May 4th, 2018, around 6pm, NBA Youngboy's manager and close friend Big Dump was standing on Nairn Street chatting with family and friends when a car would pull up firing several shots killing Big Dump in the process and injuring a woman that was standing near him. After this, rumors would circulate on TBG being allegedly involved in the murder of Big Dump as a retaliation for G Money because if you remember earlier, it was actually rumored that Big Dump was the one who put out the hit for G Money. Tells tonight on yesterday's double shooting on Naren Drive, Baton Rouge police say 29-year-old Desmond Hardinat died last night from his injuries. Police say Hardinat and a 32-year-old woman were both shot during a drive-by shooting yesterday afternoon. That happened near the corner of Naren and Baywell. We're told the woman's injuries are not expected to be life-threatening. If you have any information on the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 345. Four, stop. On June 27, 2018, TBG affiliate Boulevard Quick dropped a track called War With Us. 
which was a clear diss towards Youngboy, as he already had a song called War With Us dissing TBG. On July 4th, 2018, Fredo Bang and TBG affiliate Boulevard Quick dropped their collab track, Body Bag. On this track, it's speculated that they actually hinted at being involved in the murder of Big Dump. Fredo Bang subliminally mentioned Big Dump's name, referencing his death. Later on in the track, Fredo Bang says that he put someone's homie in a grave, possibly referring to Big Dump. He then says that he caught someone outside of a house, which was the exact way that Big Dump was murdered. A month later, on August 16th, 2018, Boulevard Quick dropped a track called And One, and on this track, it's once again speculated that he referenced Big Dump's death and got disrespectful. Around this time, an unreleased track that NBA Youngboy made called Danger actually ended up leaking, and on this track, he sent subliminal shots at Fredo Bang when he referenced G Money's death, referring to him as a gorilla which is a play on TBG standing for Top Boy Gorilla. Boulevard Quick would react to this diss when he told everyone to stop tagging a minute and proceeded to diss Youngboy, his mom, and his father. I tag him in all You see this hill? I cut that is up. Your mom is Your dad is Everybody you roll with On September 6, 2018, Youngboy paid tribute to Big Dump on his track R.I.P. Dump from his project For Loyalty. A couple months later, on October 31st, 2018, Fredo Bang dropped his mixtape Two Face Bang. And this project has several Youngboy disses. On the track Shooters on the Roof, he sends shots at Youngboy when he references YB's track War With Us which was a diss towards TBG. On the second verse, he hints at Youngboy actually killing G Money and says that he can't wait to go and get him back. On the track, Lot of Smoke, Fredo says that he's smoking on a fat guy and that he's not dumping the ashes, which is an alleged subliminal at Big Dump. On the hook of the song, he says that he killed someone's partner and that he's not sorry, once again, allegedly referring to Big Dump. In October 2018 is where this beef would take a turn for the worse. NBA Youngboy's mom would actually get involved. When she was on IG Live reading comments, when she came across a comment that said Boulevard Quick and Fredo Bang are gonna get Youngboy, to which she responded by saying this. Um. Uh, 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 let me see. Fredo Bang and Quick wants to get Youngboy. <laughs> Fredo Bang and F Boulevard slow. <laughs> After that, Boulevard Quick caught wind of this, so we took to IG Live to completely disrespect NBA Youngboy's mom. Man. Yeah, man. F young boy, mom. Tell me about this. That can eat a big, long. I'm talking about so long that that can go through that can go through her and any daughter she ever had. And ain't a god that you dream about making. F that yeah, man. Get out of my and say what she won't say about me. She holler, f me. You look like a man, though. You look like a punk. Talking about f me. I ain't afraid of. I speak on everything. Boy, f that nigga mama. Bitch, play with me first. Young boy's mom would go live on IG once again the next morning and respond when she sarcastically apologizes for making him cry and calls him fat. No, I had um I had woke up this morning. Everybody in my everybody talk about the little boy, little boy quick was talking about me. But uh, I, I, I really got on him to tell him that I'm sorry. I, I came to tell little Boulevard quick that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made you cry, boo. I'm for real. Because I was I was only I wasn't being mean like Somebody was on my thing like I'm reading now, and somebody said, oh, somebody hit me, he's a friend, so I said, fuck me, friend, because I'm like, I feel like anybody don't like my churn, and that's how I am, if you don't like my churn, you know, fuck out. I wasn't being mean or mess or nothing, and then I saw him on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, crying yesterday about, oh, his mama put put my name in her mouth, and, and, and that's fucked up, and, and, and I swear to God, man, she better keep my name out her mouth. I'm sorry, boo. I'm sorry. I put your man, your name in your mouth because I saw you crying. She look like a man. She, she, she ugly. She got man features. I'm sorry, boo. I'm sorry for talking about you because you look like a bow. You got round features, boo. I'm sorry. She want to be a comedian. So, so bad. Bitch, you want to be a rapper. So, so bad. I'm sorry I made you cry. For real. I, I'm, I don't know you, boo. I don't. I'm sorry. I was just saying, 
whoever don't like my train. I wasn't just saying, you know, trying to be mean or messy. They be on my end, on my thing, talking about you, saying you said this and that. And so that's why I said, F out. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you just said, F us plenty of days. We, we, I ain't trying to be mean. I wasn't trying to be mean. Like, for real, though. Like, I just, I, for real, I'm a mama. F anybody that don't like my churn. And f anybody who don't like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you personally, because I don't know you. I, I do not know you. So, go ahead and, you know, I said I'm sorry on live in front of everybody. So now you can go back to a grocery store and make you some more little videos. And Just a couple of weeks after dissing NBA Youngboy's mom on November 26, 2018, at around 12.30 a.m., Boulevard Quick was found dead after a shooting outside of the apartment complex he lived in. Well, there are a lot of questions remaining tonight about the shooting death of a local rapper. Donovan Jackson breaks down what we do know about this case. This music video shows Ashton Wells performing under his stage name, Boulevard Quick. Baton Rouge police say the local rapper was shot and killed at his home at Lakeside Villa Apartments on Wellwood Drive after midnight. My mama. I can't see that neat, huh? Joke, huh? Bitch. I was in bed and my balcony is right above where it happened. So I heard about six shots go off. Chase Corley has lived in the apartment complex for four months. He says he saw someone he thinks may have been the shooter running away. And I wasn't able to see the guy, but I saw him take off running through the uh, corridor right there, the little hallway into the woods. And Wells is now the second rapper from his record label who has been killed. Just last year, a rapper who went by the name G Money was also shot to death. The two rappers appeared together in music videos, but police haven't said if they believe the deaths are connected. Young boy, mom. The nigga said what? Young boy, mom. She told me leave that dead what? Two weeks later, I caught the bitch and lost his head what? Later that day, NBA Youngboy would hop on IG Live with an eerie subliminal diss to Boulevard Quick just hours after he was found dead. The next month, on December 20th, 2018, NBA Youngboy dropped his mixtape Reeler, and on the track My Mama Say, on the outro, he allegedly subliminally references Boulevard Quick's death how they killed him in front of his crib. The man who allegedly did the hit on Boulevard Quick was one of Youngboy's close friends named Duty Black, who was eventually killed shortly after the death of Boulevard Quick. And on the day of his death, Fredo Bang posted a photo of Boulevard Quick to his IG story, allegedly hinting that he got back for his fallen friend. Fast forward to April 7, 2019, NBA Youngboy dropped a track called Free D Dog, which was named after his homie who's incarcerated. On this track, Youngboy sent subliminal shots at TBG, saying that they used to run Baton Rouge, but won't claim it. A couple of weeks later, on April 19, 2019, Fredo Bang dropped his project Big Ape, and on this project was subliminal warnings towards YB and his camp, where he would seemingly hint at putting a hit out for Youngboy to be killed. This would be eerie because the next month on May 12th, 2019, NBA Youngboy was in Miami, Florida, where he was set to perform at music festival Rolling Loud. During this, TBG member named Lit Yoshi, who is actually the nephew of the founder of TBG, Lil Ivy, was actually driving around Miami with guns, allegedly looking for Youngboy. That Sunday morning at 9.54 a.m., Youngboy would put out a tweet saying, You could be anything, we gonna put that iron on you to which Youngboy actually tagged his location on the tweet. After putting out this tweet, YB's rivals figured out he was staying at the Trump Hotel in Sunny Isles, Miami. Shortly after that, Youngboy left his hotel with his entourage to make his way to Rolling Loud, when someone pulled up in a black Cadillac Escalade opening fire on YB's vehicle, to which Youngboy and his crew shot back. Youngboy's then-girlfriend, Kayla Marie, was shot during this attack. During this, more shooters were actually firing assault rifles at the valet section of the hotel, where a five-year-old would be grazed by a bullet and an innocent bystander named Mohammed Drati was killed during this attack. He's after he was involved in a deadly shooting in Sunny Isles Beach. Rapper, rapper NBA Youngboy has been arrested in Louisiana. A judge in Baton Rouge ordered the rapper, whose real name is Kentrell Golden, back, to, back into custody on suspicion of violating his probation from a shooting three years ago. Last week,
weekend, the 19-year-old was in South Florida performing at the Rolling Loud Hip Hop Festival. Before his performance, police say the rapper and his crew were shot at outside the Trump Beach Resort. An innocent man died in that shooting. The rapper's girlfriend was also shot but is now out of the hospital. On February 21st, 2020, NBA Youngboy dropped his project Still Flex and Still Steppin', and on the track Red Eye, he reminisces on how he misses Big Dump, and he says that he's still at war with TBG due to the death of his cousin Boozilla. This is when Lit Yoshi would get more involved in this TBG versus NBA beef, but let's backtrack to 2019 when Lit Yoshi was dropping multiple songs allegedly subliminally mentioning the murder of Youngboy's agent Big Dump. The track Blasting, Lit Yoshi seemingly describes the murder of Big Dump. He mentioned how Dump tried running, but he couldn't dodge the bullets. The track Chase Down, he once again described Big Dump's death when he referenced how a lady nearby was screaming as Dump was being shot at and once again mentions how Dump tried running for his life. Later on in the track, he subliminally references Big Dump's name as well. On the track Drake's, Yoshi says that he puts it on the truck, which is a reference to Big Dump. So as you can tell, Lit Yoshi was allegedly claiming to have involvement in the death of Big Dump. The next year in 2020 is where this beef would get even more deadly. On March 21st, 2020, NBA affiliate and alleged brother-in-law of Big Dump named T-Baby or T-Main was at his home with his mother when an unidentified shooter would run up to his home where T-Main would be shot and killed inside of his home. And right now we know a little bit more about the shooting that claimed the life of a man on Victory Drive last night. Investigators say shots were fired into a home, hitting two people inside. 37-year-old Travis Parker died at the scene, and a 62-year-old woman was taken to the hospital. She is expected to survive. The next day, on March 22, 2020, NBA affiliate YMM Captain, who appeared in the iPhone 6 music video alongside Fredo Bang and G Money back in 2015, would post about T Main's death on IG, to which Fredo Bang actually liked the post. It wouldn't be long for NBA to retaliate, because just a week later, on March 29, 2020, TBG member named TBG Dutch was shot and killed in front of a food mart in Baton Rouge. Baton police are trying to find a shooter this evening. Police say someone shot Jason Nixon several times. He was found in the parking lot of a business on Airline Highway, not far from the old Earl K. Long site. Nixon died later at a hospital. Police have not released any details about a suspect or why this may have happened. If you have any information that can help, call Crime Stoppers at 344. After TBG Dutch's death, Baby Joe would clown his death on IG by posting a story saying, I know y'all stupid ass hurting, with laughing emojis and the foot emoji, insinuating that Dutch got stepped on. During this time, Lit Yoshi and NBA Michi were going at it on IG when Michi was allegedly shot at by Lit Yoshi and was rumored to snitch. Lit Yoshi reposted alleged paperwork on NBA Michi and wrote, he needs to talk to his little snakes. They telling on the gorillas. Of course, gorillas referring to TBG. NBA Michi would respond to these snitch allegations on IG Live, where he cleared the air, saying that the paper wasn't him testifying, but it was just a paper identifying Michi as a victim of a shooting. Lit Yoshi responded with another IG story saying, Y'all go tell at NBA Michi, baby, don't show up in court on me. Lit Yoshi followed up with videos addressing Michi once again, accusing him of testifying against him. I'm playing. Don't get on here talking about some fake. Yeah, stop playing. That's that's the paper that came to your front door land. NBA Michi is a rat. You heard what I said? That ain't the paperwork saying exactly what he said, but that's the paperwork saying that you's a victim. You said something and they need you to back up on my court date because they don't have nothing on me. You know what I'm saying? They only got probation for five years, ten years in jail. You get caught with a gun. You you just got out. You swapped me out, huh? Yeah, you made a deal with the people and swapped me out for your probation, huh? NBA Michi clapped back on IG, accusing Yoshi of clout chasing, saying, "All street dudes know that's false. Them dudes do anything for rap attention." A week later, on April 6, 2020, another shooting between TBG and NBA occurred in a parking lot of an apartment complex in Baton Rouge, where the suspected shooters were Lit Yoshi and his close friend, TBG affiliate Seven Hardaway. The alleged victim of the shooting was actually NBA Lil Pap, 
who was later sentenced for the murder of G-Money, so this was a clear retaliation act for G-Money. And the other victim was NBA Michi, who just got into it on IG with Lit Yoshi a week prior to the shooting. After the shooting, Lit Yoshi would post a video to his IG story where he was actually wearing the exact same clothes that the surveillance showed during the shooting, where he was with Seven Hardaway, the other alleged shooter on the scene, as he was dancing and happy after they just allegedly shot at NBA Lil Pap, and NBA Michi. Four days after this incident, on April 20th, 2020, Lit Yoshi dropped a track called Runts, and on this track, he actually once again dissed Big Dump. The beginning of the music video, a truck can be seen, which is a reference to Big Dump, and Lit Yoshi could be seen smoking on a dump truck, which could be an alleged reference to him smoking on Big Dump. On the hook to this track, Lit Yoshi disses Big Dump when he says that he's smoking on that truck. But, on an unreleased version of the track, after he says this, there's ad-libs of him saying dump dump dump, which was taken off the official release of the track. On July 4th, 2020, Lit Yoshi's reign of terror would all come crashing down on him, where he was involved in yet another shooting, this time it was a drive-by, to which two adults and two children that were in their vehicle became victims of the shooting. But luckily, nobody was killed. After the shooting, the rental car used in both the April 6th and July 4th shooting was actually connected to Lit Yoshi because it was tracked back to his girlfriend as it was rented in her name. Police also found an assault rifle that matched the ballistics at the crime scene. Just five days later, on July 9th, 2020, Lit Yoshi would be arrested where he would face seven counts of attempted murder. A man is behind bars tonight after police connected him to a shooting on Greenwell Springs Road that happened over the weekend. Video surveillance linked Mayoshi Edwards to that shooting. Two children and two adults were shot when a car pulled next to theirs and began shooting. When police took Edwards into custody, they actually realized he had an active arrest warrant for a shooting that happened back in April that sent one person to the hospital. Edwards is now charged with seven counts of attempted first degree murder, among other charges connected to those sh Lit Yoshi was given a bail of $1,160,000. After this, Yoshi was being placed on a bond of $1,820,000, to which if Yoshi posted bond, he would have the option to serve his sentence under house arrest in Florida. On August 3rd, 2020, Lit Yoshi pled not guilty and would bond out where he would move to Florida to begin his house arrest. During this time, Fredo Bang was set to drop his new project in the name of G on September 11th, 2020. NBA Youngboy was dropping his album Top on the exact same day. A couple weeks later, on August 20th, 2020, Fredo Bang would take to Instagram to post a story saying, Guess me and my son dropping together. This led to Youngboy responding with a rant, saying that Fredo Bang ain't a killer, and he tells him to dig all three of his brothers up, possibly referring to G-Money, Boulevard Quick, and TBG Dutch. Hey, hey you a bum, you Go dig all three of your brothers up with your scary ass. You a Stop running from me. I ain't in no competition with you. Stop writing me. You a Nigga, you ain't no killer. You won't be like me. You write me all day. You are. Yeah, I could double back. Hey, I could any bitch. Nigga gonna try to double back and fuck the bitch. I could fuck your mama. You gonna try to fuck your mama. You a bitch. You a pimp. Fredo Bang would clap back with the video of his own, saying that YB needs to calm down, and he goes on to mock Big Dump, calling him Fat Boy, and says that he has an extra, extra large coffin. Fredo Bang also mentions how Young Boy is mad that his ex girlfriend and baby mama Jania is all over him and that they share her. Man, somebody go help little brother out, bro. He angry, dog. He angry. Talking about dead patterns and shit. It ain't like I'm on this bitch talking about fat boy and that extra, extra large coffin he got. You hear me? Or, or, or Professor X, how you gotta push his half dead ass around. I don't, I'm not on this bitch talking about that. All I said, I was gonna sell my ass in your ass. You drop it, it's how my drop. You know what I'm saying? Then, then you mad about a it ain't my fault all your in my DM. We shared two whole now all of a sudden I'm just fucking everything. You fucking stop playing, man. You know the fuck on. Eventually, on September 11th, 2020, NBA Youngboy dropped his album Top. And on the track Dead Trolls, he allegedly referenced G Money and Boulevard Quick's death. On this track, Youngboy dissed King Vaughn, Jada Youngin, G Money, and Boulevard Quick. Four of Youngboy's ops that are actually all deceased. Hence the title of the song Dead Trolls. The subliminal shots at Boulevard Quick was when Youngboy directly referenced Boulevard Quick's diss towards Youngboy called War With Us, to which Boulevard Quick rapped, All I say is watch the news. 
So Youngboy referenced this when he directly mentioned it and then Channel 2, which was the channel that reported G Money's debt. He then goes on to say it was two victims that didn't make it through, which was an alleged reference to Boulevard Quick and G Money. A couple months later, on December 14th, 2020, TBG affiliate Seven Hardaway dropped a track called Treason, to which this track was a whole diss track aimed at NBA Youngboy. All of this would come to an end when Lit Yoshi's luck eventually ran out, when on July 22nd, 2021, while Lit Yoshi was staying at Fredo Bang's house, agents kicked down the door with smoke bombs armed with tactical gear and assault rifles. Fredo Bang and Lit Yoshi were both arrested on outstanding warrants as a result of Lit Yoshi's probation violation. A couple months later, on September 9th, 2021, Lit Yoshi's bond would be revoked when the agents who raided his Florida house where he was staying under house arrest found five guns, ammunition, and a bulletproof vest. Eventually, on July 15th, 2022, Lit Yoshi pled guilty to all the previous gang-related shooting charges from 2019 and 2020, where Lit Yoshi was sentenced to 15 years in prison with hard labor, followed by three years of active supervised parole. The next month, in August 2022, TBG affiliate Seven Hardaway dropped a track called Sinister, and on this track, he once again disses Youngboy and his camp. A month after dropping this disc on September 20th, 2022, at around 8 p.m., Seven Hardaway was in the parking lot of the Shearwood Place apartment complex in Baton Rouge, where he lived, where Seven Hardaway would be shot and killed outside of his apartment. Eventually, after the death of Seven Hardaway, of course, NBA members would take to IG to mock his death. New outtake? What a new outtake? On the dead, now they talking to him. You got a chance to say it to their face. Say it with your chest, little Huh? They was dissing on the. A couple of months after this, something weird would happen. And in December 2022, it was announced that NBA Youngboy and Fredo Bang actually squashed their beef. On December 22nd, 2022, flyers would surface of a community Christmas charity drive in Baton Rouge, to which Fredo Bang and Youngboy were both a part of. Now, this was very believable, given that around this time, NBA Youngboy was on his Stop the Violence campaign. Video footage would later surface of OG3 allegedly talking to Fredo Bang at the charity event, so it seemed as if this beef was actually finally over. A couple of months later, Fredo Bang did an interview with Vlad TV, where he actually confirmed that him and Youngboy actually spoke to each other on the phone. Well, yeah, I mean, my whole thing was, okay, look, if the two of you had been going back and forth forever, we had already talked about it, I wasn't going to bring it up. We had talked about it before. I was done with the topic. But then what happened was on December 23rd, it actually it was actually announced the two of you had gotten on the phone together and had squashed your beef and actually put together an event, which was uh, an NBA and uh, TCG joint event. Is that accurate? Uh, somewhat. A lot of details. Uh, you gotta be more specific because they got so many stuff out there that's false. That is, it was they. Yeah, they was talking about a concert. They were talking about all type of stuff. Uh, okay, so 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 let's let, let's just talk about what really happened. You know, because so, like you said, there was a lot of different different stuff out there. So, did the two of you get on the phone together? We talked. How did that talk go? Um. It was basically us talking, and uh, like I say, it's never been a problem. Social media hype stuff up. I might say something in my song. He might say something in his song. And sometimes, you know, as as artists, we might try to challenge each other. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. You feel me? But it was more so of us, how can, like, how can we show that it's never been a problem from the start? You know what I'm saying? Like, let them know it's never been a problem. We just never, we just don't talk to each other. And you know what I'm saying? We got history that we don't talk to each other, but it's never been a problem. So it was like, shit, let's do a talk. Let's do something for the kids. Which we, we were supposed to do something for, like I say, we were supposed to do something for a charity or something together way a, a long time ago. But I, the, some some high ups in the court offices and stuff cut, like, I think the chief of police or somebody, they cut, they cut it. 
Right, because I guess in 2018, you said that you were supposed to squash the beef, but the government stopped it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said it. it's not squashing beef because it was never beef to squash. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm just, right. no, I'm just, you're right. I ain't you're saying. Right. You're right, I, I shouldn't have yeah. phrased it that nah, way. Nah, yeah. I just want to yeah. rephrase it because everybody, that's when, when when they did the posters, that's what they kept saying. And I'm like, bro, y'all making it not about the kids and toy drive. It ain't about us. You feel me? It's about the kids and the toy drive. You feel me? And that's why, that's another reason why I kept, I wanted to invite more rappers from the city and stuff so it wasn't just about us. You feel me? And a lot of people, I know, I know a lot of people mad that I did it, but I'm like, I, I, I had to look at my, sit in my, in the mirror every day. You feel me? And tell myself, I ain't, I ain't put a smile on a child's face because of, because of how, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's gonna make me look weak. Like we never had beef from the get go. You get what I'm saying? Fast forward to April 21st, 2023. NBA YoungBoy dropped his album "Don't Try This at Home," and on the opening track, "Big Truck." Youngboy references his cousin Boozilla. The next month, in May 2023, NBA Youngboy is gearing up to drop his project, Richest Op. And while previewing the track, Let's Do It, NBA Youngboy referenced how they laid G Money's head on a pillow when he was murdered. Fredo Bang would respond to this in a tweet telling Youngboy to watch his mouth. In the official music video for the track, Youngboy actually laid on a pillow, mocking G Money's death. After that, nothing else was said between them, and it is unknown if this war has been squashed. But after all the lives lost during this beef, I don't think we will ever see TPG and NBA come together again. 